All right, so we used puppet warp in the last video to get the angle of the anatomy to make some sense in the space. Now we need to play with the angle and the quality of the light. So first, if I interrogate my creature, looking at where the light is, looking where the shadow is, especially the head is getting a lot of light from this direction and especially from this direction, right? So this is a pretty general bright diffused light from the top down. How do I know that? Because there are shadows underneath the wings and shadows underneath the body. So if I have shadows underneath the wings and underneath the body, I'm going to have shadows on the ground as well, underneath where it's standing. Does that make sense? I'll assume you guys think that that makes sense. So I showed you dodge and burn last time. But we're going to learn how to do it non-destructively this time. But instead of just taking the colors of my creature for granted, I'm going to immediately duplicate that puppet warped version of my smart object, turn off the one underneath. Actually, I'll keep the green one and turn off the copy. And then I'm going to rasterize it. Because before we can change color or lighting, we need to commit to these pixels which means I've committed to this size because I don't want to then make my creature bigger from this or I would lose quality on the pixels. Whereas if I did it from the smart object, I wouldn't. So now looking at the whole image, and I can use Command-0 to fit the whole thing on screen, I am going to first on my rasterized copy not go to dodging and burning the shadows right away. I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, just like we normally do in compositing. I'm going to start with levels. Remember, levels is brightness and darkness. And I'm going to take the midtones, and I'm going to push it brighter or darker. What matches the environment? Actually, a little bit darker in those midtones, but not too dark, because then I lose pixel definition. So I think about there. And if you're unsure, you can always do Command Z and then Shift Command Z to toggle between. But yeah, I think that helps it match a little bit better. It was a little too bright in levels before. Because we are not doing a general lighting condition for our creature. Now we are matching it to the setting. Next, what's after levels for image adjustments? Color balance. Color balance. Yes, the three you need to know. Levels, color balance, then hue saturation. Color balance will be the temperature of the lighting. So start with the midtones. And I noticed that at the layer in the middle ground where my creature is, there seems to be a lot more yellow in the lighting of the environment, whereas my creature has more cyan. So I'm going to push it a little bit towards the yellows. Not too much, just a little bit. And I see that my, all my reds are kind of orange, so I want to push it a little bit towards the magentas as well. Get those reds back. And that actually helps a lot. And then I can try pushing it towards red or try pushing it towards the cyan. And it looks like pushing it slightly towards the red helps. Then I can also try with, mid, with highlights. I'm just going to do it really slightly, countering it with the highlights and with the shadows. Putting a little bit of that yellow and red actually in the shadows because there's plenty of blue already in my creature. Okay, now I can tell with either my history or command Z, did that color balance help? It did. It took out the green from kind of the feathers. Okay, next. This is swinging for the fences. It might not be necessary. It's the protractor in the toolbox. You hardly ever use it. But let's try it out. Hue saturation. This is for big swings. Check the hue. Do you want to shift it a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right? Or is it just right? Right in the middle. And mine's just right if I just push it to the right a tiny bit. And then the intensity of color. I'm actually going to take the intensity, which is the saturation, down a little bit on my creature. Because it should be amongst all of these candy saturated colors. 
but not necessarily out intensifying them. All right, and then let's see where we started. Started with that, we first did image adjustment levels for the lights and darks, played with the midtones. Then we did color balance to affect the lighting temperature. And then we did hue saturation to play with the intensity and the, the spectrum of the color. So that, that does a lot, but it doesn't solve the problem of the lighting direction. So this is the new skill we're going to learn. You're going to create a brand new blank layer. And you're going to do that on top of your creature layer. So wherever your creature layer is sitting, there is stuff in front of it, right? So I've got these elements in front of it. If you click on your creature layer, we're going to click on the new layer option, which it looks like a little post-it note at the bottom of the layer window. Don't accidentally hit delete, because then you'll erase your creature. So it looks like a little post-it note to create a new layer. Now I have a blank layer on top. I'm going to mark that layer gray. And we only mark gray for one reason. This is going to be a non-destructive dodge burn overlay layer. Okay. Why do we mark it gray? Because the next thing we're going to do is say edit fill with middle gray, 50% gray. This is how digital photography editing often works. When I fill it with 50% gray, it covers everything from that layer on down with gray. Doesn't look great. But now I change its blending mode. 50% gray, exact middle gray. Why do we use that? Because if I go to my blending mode, which is now normal, and I change it to overlay mode, which is what this is used for, then that gray makes absolutely no difference at all to my image if it's exactly 50% gray. Why is that useful? Well, now I'm going to use my tablet and I'm going to dodge and burn both on the creature and on the setting. But I am not going to do it on the actual pixels. I'm going to do it on my overlay layer. So I'm going to label this dodge burn overlay. This is what's called non-destructive editing. So let me show you how it works. I go to the dodge and burn tool. The first thing I'm going to do is the burn tool because I know there needs to be a shadow on the ground. I'm going to do the midtones. I'm going to do an exposure that's less than 20. I'm going to do a large brush, 0% hardness. It's remembering it from the last time I showed you burn. And then I'm just going to start painting, burning that background. And because dodge and burn are very powerful tools, you won't actually notice how much it's doing. But let me get rid of this foreground to show you what it's doing. It's creating a shadow underneath my creature. Okay, What does that look like if I turn this overlay layer into normal? It just looks like that. We're just burning the middle gray. Because what overlay setting does is anything darker than middle gray gets layered onto the layers below it. And anything brighter than middle gray gets layered into the layers below it. So, overlay. Now, what if I don't want my creature's feet to be affected by the overlay layer? Well, then I just move it underneath my creature. Does that make sense? Now that's the first overlay we're going to do. But let's just do the setting. What are other things I can do with burn to help my creature stand out in this setting? I get to be creative here, overlay mode. Well, I'm gonna darken these cake pops a little bit behind the wing because the wing looks really, really out of place floating on top of that. I'll zoom in so you can see what I mean. So what I'm doing is burning, again, on the overlay layer, burning right here. So if I set it to normal, it looks like that. 
and without it, or I'm setting it to overlay, and you can see the difference it makes. I turn off that overlay layer on and off. Next, I want to burn a little bit of this background setting. And especially this kind of really bright ice cream behind my creature, even though it could be that bright, it kind of distracts from my creature a little bit. So I just burn, burn, burn. Because my overlay layer is behind my creature, it's not affecting my creature. It's only affecting the setting. So all these shadows. Right? And it won't affect anything that's in front of the overlay layer, like the foreground. I might even burn the sky in the background behind him so that wing pops out a little bit more. So dodging and burning, very helpful, not just on our creatures, but also on our environments. I can do what's called vignetting and burn it around the edges. Okay, so lots of burning. What about dodging? Do you remember what dodge does? Yeah, it does the opposite. It will work with the highlights. So I'm going to change to the dodge tool on the same layer. I'm going to use the midtones. I'm going to use a really big brush, 0% hardness, exposure of less than 20. right? And now on the background, I might brighten up the top of these cake pops a little. So they match more the, the lighting on my creature in the mid midtones. That they're light on top, dark at the bottom. So what does that look like when I turn this to normal? Little highlights. Now, non-destructive overlay layers for dodging and burning are helpful for a few reasons. One, they don't hurt your original pixels at all. They do it all in one place. And because we tend to be pretty heavy-handed with dodging and burning, you can then take that overlay layer and you can play with its opacity. Right? So I can just take its opacity down a little bit as a layer. And you can see and dial in those, that lighting all in one place. Okay, now how can we use that on our creature? Well, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Make a brand new layer on top of my creature. But instead of filling the whole thing with gray, I'm going to go to my creature layer and use the magic wand with contiguous unchecked and just select the empty space. Actually, I could have contiguous, yeah, contiguous unchecked, just in case your creature has any undercuts, you know, like little holes in it. And then I click on the empty space. And remember, the computer does a really good job clicking on empty space in your character layer. Then I click on the layer above it, that's going to be my new non-destructive overlay layer. And then I'm going to say, select the inverse, reverse it, so now I have a cookie cutter image of my creature, and I'm going to fill that with middle gray, with 50% gray. So what does that give me? That gives me a new layer. I'm going to hit Command D to deselect on top of my creature that is 50% gray, with the exact edges of my creature. Then I'm going to set that to overlay layer. I'm going to mark it gray. So I know what I'm doing. And this is going to be my creature dodge burn non-destructive overlay layer. Make sense? So instead of dodging and burning on my creature, this is much safer. So if I add highlights to it, 